Holy guacamole, you are definitely gonna wanna watch this video until the end because I'm gonna be sharing with you guys some never before seen information directly from the MLS and it's going to blow your mind. So don't miss it. Jake Fletcher here with the Fletcher Group at EXP Realty, your Miami real estate agent. And if you guys need an expert in the area, all my information is in the description down below. Reach out anytime and I'd love to help. So it's winter time in Miami and let me just tell you, the weather is not the only thing that's cooling down. That's right, we're talking about the rental market. I did a video earlier this week talking about it, but I wanted to get a little bit more in depth into the data. I wanted to show you guys a little bit of a different perspective, a different angle on that data. And at the end of the video, I'm going to actually show you the map that's going to literally show you exactly where the clusters of listings that have been on the market for a long time are, okay? So whether you're a renter, a landlord, an investor, you're gonna wanna know this information because it's gonna be super, super valuable. And uh, without any further ado, let's get on into this video. All right, so first thing I wanted to show you guys here is this little graph, Ratch Meow. So we got the uh, number of sales in the, uh, as our green line there, number of new listings is the blue line, okay? And on the uh, Y axis, you have your number of listings, and on the X axis there, you can see you have the months, okay? This is uh, residential rentals from January 2018 until October of 2022, and it's Broward and Miami-Dade County. County, just like we were doing last month, except we're combining them uh, instead of looking at them separately because honestly, there's a lot of overlap between the two. We can definitely draw some solid conclusions from that. What I wanna show you guys here, what we can kind of glean from the data itself, this is the data of that last graph, okay? So you have your number of sales, number of new listings, all right? And remember, sales is rental transactions. So right now, so far in October, we've had 2,620 rent closed rental transactions uh, versus 4,526 in September. So if we add on about a third onto this, considering we're about two thirds of the way through the month, then uh, that 2,620, uh, should be at the end of this month around 3,490, okay? Which compared to the 4,526, that would be a decrease month over month of 22.9%. That's a big deal, okay? So 22.9% less closed rental transactions. And then in our number of new listings here, we see so far we have about 4,500 versus about 7,200 in September. So if we take that, uh, you know, the 4,521 4, that we have so far, we add about a third onto it. What we would expect roughly is to see about 6,026 new listings coming into the market in October. So 6,026 versus 7,229, that's a 16.6% .6 decrease in the number of new listings, okay? So notice 22.9% decrease in sales, 16.6% decrease in new listings. So the number of sales is a bigger decrease than the number of new listings. So again, what does that tell us? Inventory is gonna be piling up, okay? Uh, in last uh, video, I pointed out that Miami-Dade prices have been trading sideways for seven months and uh, Broward prices, median prices, have been actually in the last month have gone down. So it doesn't take Nostradamus to figure out, hey, prices trading sideways in Miami for seven months, you know, there's really only one way that they're going to break finally with inventory doubling year over year like we saw um, in that last video. And I'm going to show you another, um, you know, perspective on that in a second. With inventory doubling year over year, sales, you know, even month over month, almost 23% less doesn't take, you know, a, a genius to figure out which way prices are going to break, okay? So, Next graph I wanna show you guys here, you have, uh, again, in your y-axis, number of listings. In the x-axis, you have the months there. Uh, the green line is your number of active listings, also known as supply. And then months of inventory is your blue line there. If it's your first time to my channel, welcome. And also, months of inventory means if no new listings came on the market, how long would it take to sell the existing supply, okay? So that's what that months of inventory, that blue line is. And same thing, Miami-Dade and Broward, January 2018 to October, 2022. And um, what we're seeing here, I'll zoom in a little bit. 
So what we're seeing, there's our COVID spike, boom. Right after the COVID spike, okay, we see that number of active uh, listings, right, also known as our housing supply, plummeted, right? Because people don't want to move in the middle of a pandemic. People don't want to, uh, you know, to, to uh, move out of their house to put it up for rent as well as renters moving out of their current place. So people hunkering down, um, you know, as well as other factors, but this isn't a psychology video. This is, you know, real estate data. Um, but what we see is huge decrease in the number of active listings. And what also happened at the same time is months of inventory also went down, right? So there's less listings to sell uh, and there's also less uh, sales, less transactions happening, right? So that's gonna result in less months of inventory. Well, what happens here? As we started to see over in this other graph, I'll show you guys this. So we started to see the number of sales going up a bit, right, since the beginning of this year. Well, what happened since the beginning of this year as well in terms of uh, supply? We saw that, boom, supply going up, right? So number of, of new listings, number of active listings, uh, both going up, and then also months of inventory going up as well. In other words, inventory piling up because what we pointed out here with number of new listings is more than the number of sales. So even though we saw an increase, a little pop-up in the number of sales here since the beginning of this year, we saw more new listings than we saw sales. So like we said, inventory piling up also reflected in this month's of inventory and the number of active listings, the total supply. Now, if, if we zoom in here, what do we see? This crazy pop-up here is our month of inventory. We're almost, you know, right there at the five months of inventory pretty much, uh, you know, for, uh, for, for rental units here. So we look at this next slide of our data, you can see, I'll move myself out of the way, you can actually see, boom, five months of inventory, okay? Now, this 12,000 number, this is a similar number of inventory of what we had pre-pandemic. I'll take myself away for a second. So you can see in October of 2021, though, uh, you know, we were at about 6,000 number of, uh, uh, of, of active listings. This is um, right about, boom, right in that trough. Okay, not the, the full bottom, but pretty close to it, right? It was around that 6,000. It got down to around, you know, almost 5,000 units at the very, very bottom. But that 6,111 versus a year later here in October, we have 12,766. That is a 208.9% increase. I'll say it again, 208.9% increase, people, okay? That's wild, all right? So when you factor in that supply has doubled, okay, and we're seeing that there's less transactions, meaning months of inventory is going up, like I said, there's really only one way for prices to break here, guys, and I'm not Nostradamus to figure this out with inventory piling up, doubling, transactions, you know, closed transactions going down, these prices are are still, you know, on like most most of these places they're trying to rent out these landlords and you know are are trying to rent out for the the peak prices and they're just sitting, okay? So what I wanted to show you was the proof of that, okay? So next up, this is the map. Welcome to the MLS, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so what I've done here is I've actually taken, uh, I've set up a rental search for Miami-Dade and Broward, and I'm looking at anything and everything that's been on the market between 90 days and 730 days. So between three months on the market to two years on the market. And uh, as you can see, if I, uh, oh no, you can see it without me moving. Right here, this little number, 20, there's 2,700 listings out of that, uh, what was it, 12,700 something that are, um, you know, that have been sitting on the market for that long. So that's almost 25% that have been on the market for three months or more, okay? Now, what I wanted to show you here, the reason I wanted to show this is to show you the cluster of where these properties are so that if you guys are looking in those areas, you know that you can maybe potentially get a better deal than what they're asking, okay? So if you're working with a real estate agent like myself, and I can definitely help you, you wanna ask them, hey, how many you know days on the market is this property? And if it's been a week on the market and it seems like it's fairly priced, maybe you're not going to get be able to get a, a, a great deal on it. You could probably still, you know, potentially negotiate. But if it's been on the market more than three months, 
that's three months of, uh, of, of potential revenue that that landlord has lost. So if it's a $4,000 a month, you know, four bedroom place, well, guess what? You know, that's 12 grand that that landlord has been eating over those three months. If it's been on the market even longer than that, then that's even more money that that landlord is losing. Okay, so what we see here is we see a big old cluster in Brickle. I mean, that's like, there's hundreds of units there, you know, because some of them like that, there's a pin, you know, five, five properties there, right? $20,000 a month they want for this place, right? Uh, that we saw pop up. Uh, and, and that's a four bedroom, uh, four and a half bath, 20 grand a month. I mean, it's a penthouse, but dang, 20 grand a month. 8,500 a month, 5,000 a month for a one bedroom, uh, 13,500 for a three bedroom, three and a half bath. I mean, you know, I can see why somebody doesn't want to necessarily rent that. Look at all this competition they have. You can probably find a better deal than that, right? Now, uh, I'll zoom out just a bit so we can kind of get a scope. I'll show you guys where these clusters are, south of 5th, all up and down, South Beach as well. Uh, basically think anywhere like on the water line. Um, we'll, I'll show you here, you know, you've got downtown, you've got a cluster, Edgewater, you know, you've got a cluster, anything on the water, landlords often feel like they can get more for it. So they charge crazy. Now look at this. This is little Haiti. Uh, I used to live in this neighborhood and I can attest that this is a little bit more of a higher crime area. Um, there was one listing that I wanted to show you guys. $18,000 a month for a four bedroom, two and a half bath. Okay. Check this out. It's beautiful, right? It's a four bedroom, two and a half bath, a little over 2,500 square feet. According to the listing agent, you got a pool in the backyard with a sun deck, you know, it's modern, it's new construction, AstroTurf, a pool table, it's furnished, yada, yada, yada. It's a nice place, right? But is it $18,000 a month nice when you have so many other options to choose from that aren't in a higher crime neighborhood? Now, I mean, that's up for you guys. You tell me, right? If you had $18,000 a month to spend uh, as, you know, disposable income to spend, there's our house as it was under construction. Is this an $18,000 a month street? I mean, like I said, I used to live in this neighborhood, so it's no, sh you know, shade on the neighborhood. It's a perfectly fine neighborhood, but is it an $18,000 a month neighborhood? That's the question, right? And, you know, you're the only, you can answer it. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll sh you know, show you, I'm not going to show who the listing agent is because I don't want to embarrass them, but 112 days on the market, okay? That property has been on the market for 112 days, Okay. That's a long time, man. So uh, as we go up, like this whole area, all of these properties, severely overpriced. I mean, look at that, 25 grand a month. I mean, that's Buena Vista. It's near the design district, but I mean, come on, dude. You know, nine grand a month, seven grand a month. I mean, 35 for a two, one. You know, I mean, you're biking distance to Wynwood and stuff, but like some of these prices, like nine grand, four grand, three grand for a three, one. You know, I mean, it's just kind of, it's a little out there for the neighborhood. You know, it's, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit extra, okay? <laughs> now, I do not know what's going on with my map here. There we go. Um, so we can see here all along Biscayne, you know, if you're going anywhere, if you're trying to rent anywhere that's like east of US-1 uh, and it seems overpriced, go ahead and check those days on the market, right? Um, let me see if I can zoom out. We can cover a little bit more ground here, right? All up and down the beach. Look at this. Look at freaking Bow Harbor, Surfside, you know, North Beach is not as bad, but Mid Beach, look at that sucker right there. All up and down the beach, right? If you're on that beach side, chances are, you know, if it's been on the market more than three months, chances are you might be able to get a deal on that sucker, all right? So um, let's keep moving up here, up into Broward eventually. Uh, you can see, I mean, look at this, Sunny Isles Beach. Look how many of them there are in Sunny Isles Beach. That's hundreds of listings, maybe even like half of the of the 2,700 are just between Aventura and Sunny Isles right there, you know? So that's pretty wild style, if you ask me. Even Hollandale, everything on the beach side, all up and down, we see that we see where these clusters are. They're pretty much on the water or they're in the areas where people think it's really fancy, right? Like Hollywood Lakes over here, there's a big cluster. Uh, you know, as we move up, Dania doesn't have as many, um, but as we move up, we get into Fort Lauderdale. Uh, you can see here, 
uh, you know, Central Beach, you got a little cluster there. The Seven Isles, Las Olas, not as much. The Galt Mile, Lauderdale Beach. I mean, look at this, all the, you know, tons of, that's a big old cluster right there, you know? So, you know, if you're looking in any of those areas, definitely you want to ask your realtor, hey, how long has this been on the market? What do you think it's actually worth? And make sure you're not overpaying, okay? That's my main advice. Now, let's real quick just look and see where we don't see big clusters, right? Sort of out west, you know, out west, it seems like, you know, these are probably more likely, more often they're like mom and pop type landlords. You know, everything east, people are really trying to stick it to you. They're trying to get maximum rent value. And I don't blame them, but at the same time, you got to price things at the market rate otherwise, or I mean, even slightly above or below, otherwise it's going to be sitting forever and you're going to be losing money. Okay. So if you like to lose money, then overprice your listings, I guess. Uh, there's also a cluster over in Doral that I noticed too. So there's a couple clusters, you know, over here, over there, right? So important, you know, there's some in Coral Gables, you've got a cluster a little bit in the Grove, but you know, the Grove is a hot area. Um, and then as you go down south, there's less and less, okay? So that's pretty much what I wanted to share with you guys today. If you're a renter, you know, make sure that you're doing your due diligence and you're not overpaying. If you're a landlord, make sure you're working with a good realtor like myself who can tell you the actual market value so you don't lose your freaking pants on a listing sitting on the market for 90 days or more. And there might be, we might end up in a situation where because things were so hot in the real estate market and people were overpaying so much that they feel like they they felt like they could just keep exponentially increasing rent and rent and rent forever, but they weren't realizing at the same time that inventory was in the process of doubling over the last year. So we might end up in a situation where some investor landlords are upside down, uh, you know, from the start, thinking that they're going to be able to turn it right side up, but they're not going to be able to. So you know. It's going to be interesting. We will definitely see what happens. I will definitely be reporting it to you. Um, but, you know, if you're a landlord or an investor, make sure that you're you're pricing things properly. Uh, make sure you're working with a great real estate agent. All my information is in the description down below. Reach out to me anytime. Jake Fletcher here with the Fletcher Group at EXP Realty, your Miami real estate agent. Here for you guys every single day. Reach out to me anytime, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. <laughs>